But we do have a little bit of time to kill here before our next match. Um, we do, as you can see, we have uh, SoCal versus Stalus coming up is not for another 45 minutes. Um, so we're going to sort out what to get to before then. I am going to... Let's see. We're going to see... I'm going to maybe try to get... See if... I, I want to see who's streaming from Florida. I want to see if we can get anybody in to come say hi uh, and see yeah, what they thought some, about that match. Um, some recaps. I know. Let me. I'm going to real quick mute, and I'm going to ping two people and see if they're interested in having a little chat, and you can talk for a bit, Mr. Chillier. Uh, I'll I'm keep typing. you all entertained with my lovely singing. Please don't leave. Do you think Stateless will be abandoned and introduce regions? No, we will not be eliminating Stateless for, <clears throat> as of right now, any future iteration. I'm pretty sure United States Cup will run its course before Stateless does. Ohio will be eliminated? Well, the Ohio match is tomorrow at 2359 UTC, so uh, 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Western if you're here, but, you know, you guys, you can say Ohio will be eliminated all you want, but we have yet to see Ohio back down against any team thus far. We saw them go up against a very, very strong SoCal and absolutely dominate, wipe the floor with them 6-3. to three. Um, So, uh, good job to them. But we're gonna we're gonna get some players in here who are gonna kind of give us a little bit of a a recap on on what they thought. Hey friends, oh, let me change my server name. Hey, hey. welcome, welcome, Thank Digital you. Hypno. Congratulations welcome. on your win. That was a really good performance from you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is really a ad hoc spur of the moment thing here. Um, so I guess what uh, just first off like. Do you have any like just sort of general thoughts on your guys's performance that looked really really strong in that match overall oh god we did actually yes yeah <laughs> i thought we entered a lot of maps no you guys looked really good especially like when you look at it in context your guys That's performance true. in the matchup looked very very good i i don't know usually i i tend to look more at like like let's let's look at the last map for example like we got 1.8 million team score and I'm just thinking like, cause I can see the team sheet and I can see what other scores my teammates have gotten. So like, uh, for example, on the last map, we got two players with 400K and I'm just thinking like, probably we could have done better. Like, uh, you, especially when you're in loser's bracket and you have to play a pool twice, you have to judge like, how do you think we'll do if we, if we play this map again? And th there are a lot of maps that I think we can probably do a little better. But overall, um, I don't know. Pro probably just good RNG on, on some <laughs> map. Like Saisaki was, oh, I didn't realize it was that close. <laughs> but yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I think it seemed like you guys had some early picks in mind and then you got a couple of break points and you maybe changed up strategy a little bit like they had picked hard rock one into you guys but then you picked nomad one yourselves did you have kind of like like what were your what do you what would you say were your like main picks in mind going into that and like did that strategy change when you saw that how the early points went um so against texas we figured um we should probably burn some hidden picks and then see how it goes from there uh, especially since I think our hidden lineup is is pretty solid. We have like me, Exarch, and then honestly, like anyone, like Fuzzlin can do hidden aim pretty well and stuff like that. So after we got the breakpoint on DT, okay, so we double banned DT and then they ended up picking DT first. Wait, no, second. Second, yeah. yeah. They, they, they picked DT early, but then we won by like 600k. And I was thinking, well, I really am not sure if they're even going to pick the last DT because I'm sure what they were thinking is, okay, we can just wipe the DT picks that are left and probably get a few points. And then 
I mean, to be fair, the DT map that they picked is not at all like the other one. Like, this is more of an alt map with like two epic bursts. Thanks, Dada. <laughs> double tap map? Yeah, that's a double tap map. But I think after we like basically three raid um, Freedom Dive, like Noma 2, I think we were thinking. Uh, what were we thinking? I, I don't know. There was a lot of like, we probably don't have to be as like, really. Or like, we. I, I don't know. Don't have to think as much about our picks because we, we were so far ahead at that point that we figured, okay, we can probably do fine on most maps. And oh, oh yeah, with Nomad 1. So we were thinking, let's pick a map that they probably will have a strange, like a backup lineup on. Because you have your main players that go in for most maps. And then there are a few picks where like the rest of the roster goes in. And we figured Nomad 1, Aprex is probably not going to go in. And they'll probably pull out some pocket, not pocket picks, but like backup players. Uh, and also Skill was saying that his aim was feeling pretty good. So we went ahead and picked Nomad 1. Yeah, I mean, he, and... he considering he zero missed it, I think he was right about that one. Yeah, we, we got only one miss. You had one match. miss between the three of you, yeah. That was yeah. a really, really strong performance. Yeah, that was pretty solid. And and then they did end up picking the last DT, but by this point, the score was like 5-1, and I'm not really sure how their mental was. Uh... By the <laughs> end of the match, I think they were just done. So probably at that point, they weren't feeling too into the match anymore and I, honestly i wouldn't either so i don't blame them they were starting to kind of fall out of line at the end and you know we kind of mentioned it during the match but the fatigue that takes effect when you're in multiple tournaments over kind of this period of the summer these two or three months from you know, june august and july it it kind of takes effect with the fatigue and playing multiple matches do you think it you know, had a massive effect between you coming from the winner's bracket to Texas having to play a match in the loser's bracket already? You think that might Oh, have that's given actually you a good point. Um, yeah, I, actually, I didn't even realize that. Like, I feel like the more matches you play in, in a single tournament, the more you just, like, get sick and tired of it. <laughs> and especially, like, I, I have memories of, like, teams that fell into loser's bracket early in like round of 32 and then they make it all the way to loser semis but then by then it's like oh man like you know how at the start of the uh, of a tournament like let's say it's a draft tournament and so usually in draft tournaments your team is like oh yeah all motivated and like doing practice lobbies and then you get to semifinals and it's like oh disaster no scores on the sheet and it's like well please show up at everyone please look at the pool at everyone <laughs> That's kind of what happened to your team in Konyo Cup. I feel like you were you had a bit of trouble with your team there. Oh yeah, I had some struggles with my Konyo Cup team. It wasn't really bad, but um, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to draft Konyo Cup because you don't really get to see like there's no commitment level written next to the player name. Like, <laughs> is this person even gonna show up to every match and stuff like that? Like, are they gonna talk in the team server? So it's hard to draft good players that are also responsible. And like in Konya Cup, by the time you get to like the fifth or sixth pick and like all, all the strongest players are taken, it's like, well, you, you're kind of going in blind. You have to hope that you end up picking someone that can fulfill both like strong performance and also reliability. So as far as... Um... As far as USC goes and, and thinking about picking teams, so I know from being behind the scenes that Florida had a lot of signups um, and you guys ended up going with like this roster that is identical minus one one player swap to last year. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think you can give us any kind of like behind the scenes as to what went into deciding, okay, we're going to keep this roster and this is the player we're going to change and this is who we're going to pick, like your, your last selections there? Um, so we can just take a look at like how the tournament scene sort of is in general like there are, there are a few select players that like you see their name and you're like yeah they play quite a lot of tournaments and the florida roster in general like has 
like Florida has a lot of players, but I feel like only a few are really at that level where like they really actively play tournaments, especially like at, at a high level. Because you have tournament players, but then there's like I don't know, open rank competitive tournament players. <laughs> and like you and exarch would be the examples yeah, yeah. from your team me, yeah. me and exarch for sure um cappy and skill also being very high skill cut players and definitely i don't know being able to fulfill and like show up when they need to for their for their strengths and also being tournament players themselves i mean they're both playing in nat this year and they've been playing quite a lot of tournaments in the past and uh so boggles of course has also been on the team since the dawn of time and, Boggles is the USC player. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, just on, on top of the fact that he's been on the team so many so many years, like, his his strengths as a, as a DT player, or, like, speed player in general, just fill the roster really well. Especially considering, like, I would say that Cappy and Skill's biggest weaknesses are, are double time and speed. Um, and so I think having a player like Boggles just rounds it off a lot. And then for the last player, so last year we had Fish, um, who is you know known for known for playing lower ranked tournaments, but he was still I think the most consistent and reliable pick at the time. Um, and honestly, I, I think it kind of worked out because Dada made the grand finals pool like six stars, so. It's not like it really mattered. Hey, come on. <laughs> the well, one one was seven stars. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, you're right. The, the tiebreaker was Agoetis. True. <laughs> but, um, so in 20, 2018, we had Zanik as our sixth player. And we were considering taking him again. But, like, we started thinking more about what we really needed from our last player. And also, Fuzzlin had been telling me that like he was really motivated to join the USC team this year. And he had been playing a lot of tournaments. Um, I think his his improvement in, in tournament play and consistency was, was definitely showing. And his skill set, being able to play, um, I don't know, really all sorts of maps. I mean, I know he's known for aim mostly, but he can play some pretty weird stuff as well. And I think that's... That's something that Zinnick would kind of be in for as well. So we figured uh, Fuzzlin would probably be a more well-rounded pick, especially since I think Fuzzlin's skill cap is a bit higher than Zinnick's. So that that ended up being the roster. I mean, like sure, Florida probably uh, Florida had a lot of signups, but like as I said earlier, only a few really were like I don't know a cut above the rest. Like I feel like. Even if we had like 20 signups, and I don't even remember how many we had, but there's, yeah, yeah, like I was saying earlier, there's only so many that actually played tournaments at, a, at such a top level. And so that ended up making the roster choice not too difficult. I mean, we didn't even do, did we do tryouts? Uh, I think, oh, I wait, we did. We did, but like it wasn't really organized. It was like, hey, play through this map pool and send me your MP link. And that was about it. At 16. Well, you had 15 eligible signups, I guess. So, okay. Yeah, pretty decent number, but yeah, especially compared to other states, I bet. Um, yeah, it was interesting because you had like you guys in Texas both had 15. Washington had 14. Oh. Um, but then it like drops all the way down to teams that just like sign up with the minimum number of players. So I think Washington is like they have a one of the most tight knit communities of any state, from what I know. Yeah. And so that's that's probably why they ended up getting a lot of signups. We're back to kind of Washington and Corsace and uh, oh Asian. true yeah they, they have a, a lot of players that play tournaments with each other uh, especially in four v four tournaments which which have teams of eight so if you consider th that this is teams of six I think Washington had a lot more players to pick from they ended up outperforming their seed which was really crazy but I don't I mean I guess you know it seems like your your guys's roster choices have definitely been working out I think everybody on the team filled their niche or um oh, yeah. whatever very very well especially in this match when I mean, you could see you guys made you know roster swaps on a lot of different maps but they were always always seemed to be the right ones i even you know we questioned i, I i'm curious if you would have won no uh hard rock one if you had been in i i expected you to be in for that one honestly over boggles but i, I don't know that i really expected myself to go in over boggles too <laughs> to be honest <laughs> so here's what happened is so i admittedly was quite lazy with practicing this map pool 
I saw Hard Rock One, I saw the song, I saw that I already had it downloaded, and I was like, well, I probably sight read it. I think it's fine. I'll just sight read it. And then it got first picked. Actually, I was going to play it like, actually, was I even going to play it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, it got it got first pick and Boggles was like, oh, I just got 800k. And I don't know, sometimes for me, when I set root Hard Rock, it's like a little rough, especially with like, I don't know, consistency with with Hard Rock when I'm sight reading. So I was like, oh, Boggles just got 800k. But actually his other score on the sheet was like 540k. So, but I was like, okay, you know, that's just sight read. So I was like, all right, Boggles, you can do it. And... I mean, to be fair, it was also their first pick, and I figured they're probably gonna do okay. I mean, considering it's such a large best of, like best being best of thirteen, uh, I don't value the first few picks that much in in best of thirteen. And I, I guess I can reference the NAT match that I played against Fancy Lad earlier Where today. Where you won four out of the last five maps in a best of thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. <laughs> I first picked some hidden aim map and I just like trolled and lost and I was, I I di didn't even think anything like I didn't care that I lost my first pick to be honest. I was like wow, it's best of 13. It's not going to make a big difference. And I think I was sort of thinking the same thing with this match with Har Boggles going in for Hard Rock 1. Um I figured like even if he doesn't like really perform, I don't think it's going to make a difference in this match because I mean, I mean, it's their first pick, and we have quite a few picks of our own that we think we can win, being the hidden pool and a few other gimmicky maps. And uh, so I don't know. It's just like, all right, Boggles, you could play. And I think I wanted to play through. So there was a map, uh, DT3. I hadn't played through DT3 yet. Which, um, if you're not sure which one that was, it ended up being it was the second to last map that was played. Um, and I hadn't played through that yet, and so I was like, "All right, Boggles, you you play this, and because like you have 800k plus potential, so you, you can just play it, and I will play through DT3 in solo, so that I'm not going in blind." So that that's how that went. To be honest, if Boggles' score was replaced with an FC, we would have won. But I, again, I it, I mean, it, we can already say it, it didn't matter in the end. So just for fun. Boggles played, and you know, he he got a score. It's all good, <laughs> right? And a, I mean, he was in on an aim map against Apraxia in on an aim map, so you know. <laughs> That's very true. Wow, you have a good point. Apraxia aim, Apraxia hidden. That was an interesting. I don't know. Texas's Texas's roster choices seem kind of interesting on a few of those maps. I thought with Apraxia playing, yeah. but he played Hard Rock One. He played Hidden Two and Hidden One, like. I feel like Strange. Texas's roster kind of relies on Apraxia being able to sit in, especially because like his his well-roundedness is like not the strongest. Like you, you think of strong tournament players, and Apraxia is a name that you think of, but you don't really think of him as being able to sit in for every map. Um, but I think Texas sort of tries to rely on his tournament strength in general, and at in in matchups like these where like you're against six players that aren't uh really all well-rounded individually i think florida's roster really covers each other's weaknesses very very well and if you're against a roster like that that can that has like niche players or like specialized players for uh, for certain maps it can be hard to rely on like one player who is like you're just relying on their strength as a tournament player in general rather than their well-roundedness as a player and i mean we we even saw on nomad one that I mean, the lineup ended up being Pizza, Kanyo, and Dulakira, which I thought was a little interesting. I thought Minwu is usually the player to go in for aim, so I was a bit concerned when the map was starting and those were the players in from <laughs> Texas. So, I, I I don't know. I mean, we, yeah, we, we ended up winning that map. I mean, it was kind of close. I mean, it, we won it by 380k, but I mean, one miss in the middle drops your score a significant amount, and so, like, Looking at our performance on Nomad 1, like, I think we did pretty well, but I don't think it's, like, like, it, it's different from, like, getting 800k on a map with little spacing, because combo, despite it being score v2, combo is definitely a significant part of your score, and so I think 
I mean, like one one small break from me in the middle, and then one small break from Fuzzin in the middle would have shifted the lead over, and that that's that's also I think sort of why players tend to not like playing Nomad One. There's sort of the aim consistency maps in pools, just because like one small mistake, and it, it's a lot harder to make a small mistake with your aim than than your tapping or reading. I feel like so, um, but yeah, that, that was really interesting. And I'm not sure why. I think Minwoo probably wasn't feeling too into the match. I mean, he did top score Saisaki for Texas, but I'm, I don't know, still questioning why Minwoo decided to bench for that map. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. But I, I don't know. It, it's just a display of how Texas's roster is. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, their, just an interesting time. Yeah, their roster has has like these weird points where you know we discussed them on stream being very very mechanically strong. You know, you, you think of like pizza lovers aim and you think of apraxia speed, but then you kind of mm -hmm. look deeper into their roster and they do have some of these kind of holes where they have real trouble filling on certain maps, especially oh, yeah. especially when you add in the mental side where you have apraxia and minu who are both extremely if not like the most tilt prone players in the tournament so you have them going out for picks maybe because they just need to try to reset their mental like they both went out for like minu went out for um nomad one and you know praxi was never gonna play it but and then they come back in for dt3 but it, it be it becomes a, a little more difficult i think for them to pick some of their rosters for, the, for some mm -hmm. of these maps both because of perform because of in-game skill sets and because of mental like tilt problems yeah that's a really good point and Although to be fair, Minwoo also benched for the map before, which is interesting. That um, I mean, y you would probably have to ask Texas himself why Minwoo didn't play Nomad One, but a proxy not playing Nomad One is also one of the reasons why we picked it. Um, I mean, I, I don't think a proxy was really popping off in the match, but it's more of that like if a proxy is not in for a map, that means that they're gonna have to use their other players, and. Uh, I don't know, I guess I probably said that in a more dramatic way than, <laughs> than it needed to be. But my point is that, like, you know, as I was saying earlier, I think Texas relies a lot on Apraxia being able to just sit in. And since Apraxia has so much tournament experience, I mean, he, uh, out of anyone on Texas, should probably be able to handle that. Because, I mean, it, it takes, I feel like it takes a lot out of you if, uh, I mean, I guess it depends on your mental as well, but it takes a lot out of some players if they have to sit in for every map. Um, a lot of players like to, you know, leave and, and play whatever for a bit or like try, like if you're about to play air 8 hidden, you might want to play the start for a bit so that you're not thrown off by the sort of transition to low AR. But so yeah, we, we picked Nomad 1 partly for that reason and, you know, also as I said earlier because I think we were feeling pretty good on it. So yeah. You have three good aim players who were all feeling like they were having a pretty decent day so it made sense at the time. Yeah. So. And I do, I do want to look forward a little bit. So we have three more matches this weekend. You guys are obviously directly involved in one of them. Um, uh -huh. Before we can get to that, we have SoCal versus Stateless, which is really, I don't think a matchup that people expected to see in the losers bracket. Um, yeah. I, you know, and yeah. I'm curious, like, kind of, you know, from somebody who's played USC for like every year that it's been around and has seen kind of the the rise and fall of Stateless and you know the rise and fall of SoCal as well. Do you have any thoughts on on kind of that matchup and what it means to see that in the losers bracket? Um, I think it all comes down to how SoCal got down here in the first place. Like, we we saw SoCal ended up losing to Ohio, and that I think mostly goes to show that I mean o Ohio has been a high placing team in this tournament since yeah I, I think since the very first iteration, and them putting on such a strong show against SoCal ended up ending up beating them into the losers bracket. And you know, keep in mind, SoCal is the Idki Vaxe team that Reddit has been fawning over, and I think it's, I don't know, I think almost commendable that that Ohio was able to beat them and bring them into losers bracket. Uh, it does shift the tide of the tournament a bit, but I mean, if you think about it, if Ohio has potential to six three SoCal, then I think it would be more scary if Ohio was in the losers bracket, to be honest, because. I mean, j just the fact that SoCal has losing potential, if that makes sense. I mean, it, I don't know, it, it helps you not think of them as this like godly unbeatable team just because of the names that are on the roster. 
Yeah, and I, I, I would agree with that. I think we kind of had that discussion a little bit as well, where, you know, it's like, oh, we showed that the gods can bleed. Because, yep. like you yeah, said, yeah. Reddit and, and everyone else, you know, people saw, oh, Itky, Vaxi, Monko signed up, like, the tournament's over, why bother playing? Just give them the badge right now. And, you know, now you have them looking a, a little bit beatable. You have you guys coming out performing really well against Texas in this match. You know, does that give you guys maybe a little bit of optimism going into what will most likely be a matchup against them tomorrow? Uh, I think, and I mean, the, I kind of want to go back first to like talking about um, potential mm -hmm. of like of like playing a pool more than once. Like, I, I think Hardock One is actually a perfect example. We were talking about how Boggles went in for that map and probably won't go in for it again. Um, like I, I'm pretty sure I will be going in for that map if we play it um, against SoCal or or Stateless. But I, I don't know. There are a lot of maps that, even though it seemed like strong performance, I can compare the scores to the sheet and say, okay, we are actually gonna probably like our average score on this map is higher than what we actually did in this match. And I think SoCal. I mean, so here's the thing about. Um, in being in the losers bracket and playing a map pool twice is that you get to look at the other team's match history link for the map pool and sort of see exactly how they perform on maps and who they put in. Um, and part of that can like you could argue that that helps a lot, but you could also argue that it's quite misleading to base picks like if if uh, the winner of SoCal or Stateless were to base their picks against us on like maybe we misperformed a little like like if they think oh they uh like digital hypno didn't even go in for hard rock one we should probably just pick that then i mean i'm i'm gonna go in for it next so uh next match so uh it's stuff like that where um i'm i'm just really interested to see how wh whoever wins this match like how they strategize because honestly i feel like this mp is a little misleading <laughs> to be honest <laughs> And like there, there are a lot of maps where like the map ended, and then in our team voice call, all three of us were like, "Oh, I entered. Oh, I entered." <laughs> and then you oh, won anyway. God. Yeah, and we ended up winning. I mean, yeah, we ended up winning the maps, but um, actually, at at the end of Nomad Two, so Boggles missed in the very last stream. He unmuted and he said, "Oh, I entered," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> right. What, what? Yeah, he got he got eighteen hundred combo. Like, yeah, he did okay. I'm, like he has three scores on the sheet and they're all FCs. That's so insane. I was That's assuming insane. like I was like, oh no, did he did he like six hundred K? Did we lose? What happened? <laughs> and then I look at his score and it's nine hundred K and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Dude, um, that that nomad too, you guys looked pretty good. I, I would have to think that SoCal yeah. might 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 think about banning that one against you guys, assuming that they get past stateless to face you guys in that potential match. Yeah, and after the match, um, I think Skill was, or like, uh, some people in our voice call were mentioning that SoCal, uh, like, some players on SoCal are, like, treating this match against Stateless as their practice lobby. Like, they're not even going to, I mean, Itki is grinding the pool right now as we speak, but from what I've heard, I think a uh, few people are going to be sight reading against Stateless. So that'll be interesting. And I think, like, as we said before that, I mean, these are these are very reputable players, um, Itki, Vaxi, Monko, and, you know, their their fill players are are nothing to scoff at either. But I mean, they it's not like they'll FC every map. And I think if Stateless is able to put on a good show uh, and strong performance, then I think, I don't know, being best of 13 tends to favor the stronger team. But I think Stateless probably, I mean, we'll have to see, but I think any team has a chance. Um, he, he, just, despite the names on the roster, I think any team has a chance, and that includes Taylor's in this match. I think it should. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a good match between Taylor's and SoCal. I think the concern oh, yeah. has the concern has been this whole tournament. Like, there's, there's two ways SoCal could go. You know, they could, they could overestimate themselves and underestimate their opponents. Or mm -hmm. they can be, you know, OWC winners in Kivaxe from 2019, which, given how little they've played tournaments, seemed relatively unlikely. And I think we've seen kind of somewhere in the middle of that where 
Yeah, yeah Idki's yeah. going to practice the pool, but they're underperforming a little bit from what you'd expect, and it opens the door for other teams. Yeah, that's definitely true. And like I was mentioning earlier, I think the Ohio 6-3 against SoCal definitely proves that. I mean, o Ohio has been a very strong team, and SoCal also, as we know, is a very strong team with, with the reputation that their players have. But just the fact that, I mean, they're a strong team, but they're, I feel like, just as strong as any of the other strongest teams in the tournament. Like, SoCal is good, but there are definitely teams that can compete. And I think we, I, I hope we'll be able to see quite, quite some competition um, against Stateless. And then, of course, uh, the match that we haven't talked about, the actual winner's bracket final. You've got Ohio with, uh, you've got Ohio with Eryuka Blaze at the helm, and you've got Virginia with uh, what has been their best performance in, in USC to date. Do um, you have any thoughts on, on how that match is likely to go, what you expect out of those teams in their winner's final that's going to send a team to top three guaranteed, top two guaranteed? Um, I think Virginia has been, I, I think especially with um, with BTMC's improvement recently, like over the last year, and um, and Rectigon being a very, very strong third player for Virginia, I think they probably have a stronger like main lineup with like Tony, Ed, and uh, Rectigon than Ohio does. I mean, Ohio has two sit-ins being Aryu and Kablaze going in for almost every map. And then they have four players to sort of switch in and out for depending on the map. And I feel like Virginia overall probably has a higher skill cap than... Uh, although maybe maybe I'm not too informed on Ohio's four other players. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, Blairzy and Shotgun... Oh wait, Blairzy, Shotgun, Shotgun, Ape, and Pupper have all been on Ohio's roster, I think, since 2018. And... Yeah. They just had they've, this change with Usha coming in this year for the first time. This player who's mm -hmm. come out of nowhere. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too familiar with Usha, but, um, but I, I do know that, um, I mean, Blairzy, Shakunape, and Pepper have been able to bring Ohio to top three finishes in previous iterations, and so surely over time, um, I mean, assuming that they haven't, like, quit the game and only come back for USC, assuming that they've improved at least a little bit over time, I think. They are definitely going to be able to provide for area and Kablaze. But I think Virginia has just as much potential. And I think we've seen that, especially, I mean, considering they made it all the way to winners finals, you would think that they have potential. But I, I think with their performance this year, they, they definitely have what it takes to, to take Ohio down and knock them over to the losers bracket. But oh man, it would be so interesting to see Virginia in the winners bracket of grand finals. That That is... That that's is like something, that's something you would never believe three years ago. I say last year they got beaten. What was it, seven one by Ohio in the second round, second to last round of losers bracket? I think it was like oh, after. Really? Yeah, they they got knocked down because they ran into NorCal last year in the quarterfinals. Oh, right. So they NorCal. made they had to play several matches in losers bracket. Where they played New York, they played Washington, um, but then they ran into Ohio um, and were eliminated in that mm -hmm. round. So this is yeah. Virginia's. I. Well, I believe this is their best, has to be their best performance in oh, yeah. USC ever. And for those of you who are not familiar, NorCal was Toy Fiery Rage. Yeah, yeah. The Toy and Fiery Rage show last year um, and the year before. So, and was... I think they won both iterations. Yeah, they won 2018 and they won, um, and they won 2019 with the, uh, the Fiery and Toy just kind of out skill capping everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Toy, and I, I think Toy not playing this year was sort of the downfall of NorCal because, like, if Toy's not playing, then why should Fiery play? If Fiery's not playing, then like, why should Quorum or any of their other players really play? Um, so uh, I think NorCal by now is out of the tournament, from what I've heard. Oh yeah, they've they have been out for a little bit now. They okay. they got eliminated yeah. by um, by Stateless actually last week in the losers bracket round three, I guess it would be. I, I feel like I feel like Toy not playing this year. In his head, he's just like opening the door for recess so that all the little kids can like play with each other. <laughs> because like I I feel like I don't know. Toy is one of those players who's just like 
I kind of feel like winning this tournament. And then he just does it. And you're like, well, that was fun. But him not playing this year, and really he hasn't been playing Osu at all recently. Um, but that kind of opens the door for, I wouldn't say a more even playing field because even NorCal ended up losing to Texas in grand finals last year, although they did win the bracket reset. But I, I think NorCal actually is kind of reminding me of SoCal this year. Um, although SoCal obviously I think has a bit higher skill cap with Vaxa Itki. Um, but it's quite similar and in that like they're very strong and they have reputable OWC players, but they're not just going to sweep every match. And I think, I mean, we haven't been seeing SoCal sweep every match, have we? I mean, no, they, I mean, they lost to Ohio. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, you think about it and you're like, oh man, Faxi, Itki, Monka is so strong. And then you look at the MP link and you're like, wait, they're missing. <laughs> what? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's really interesting um, to see the, their performance. And I'm not sure if it's really what people were expecting. I think a lot of people probably started watching this tournament expecting, you know, the Itki Vaxe show where they just show up and, and pop off and it's like, oh my god, wow, my favorite players. Yay, Vaxe's back, yay. And then, um, well, I don't know. They're, they're still a really strong team. And I, I, I mean, I'm going to be watching this match, so... I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I'm I'm not sure what tricks Stateless has up their sleeve, but I am definitely interested to see if they can put up a fight. I think we're going to be seeing that fight starting here shortly. So you and you and all of us uh, will be able to will be able to bear witness to uh, to see what kind of what kind of uh, fight we see Stateless. You know, will they be able to make it close versus SoCal, or will we see, you know, SoCal going back to kind of dominating like they were in the first couple rounds of the tournament? Um, yeah, that match. Oh, go ahead. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm also sort of interested to see what sort of competition Florida is going to be up against, because, I mean, like being able to see the MP link of of the other match, as I said, is is very helpful, but. I mean, I'm also I'm gonna be watching the match, both from the mainstream and also I'll be trying to listen in on the comms of of the players themselves, just to sort of get a feel for how they feel on the maps and stuff like that. I think we are all very excited for that match, which is gonna be getting underway here in about uh, five ten minutes or so. Um, so I think I, I think you know definitely. Uh, everybody stay tuned for that but i want to say thank you um so we are going to move i think back into uh back into getting into that match so i want to say thank you for joining us to habib mm -hmm. it's been very insightful to uh to have you here and i appreciate all your all your elaborations all your insight all your information on your team and kind of the other teams and and your thoughts on the tournament so far right. um so if you have any any final parting thoughts for us here before we go back into uh getting ready for socal versus stateless um overall i think i'm just very curious to see what happens because we've been mentioning i mean socal could really go either way um and so far they've been doing kind of average compared to other teams but i i'm just very very interested to see what happens this match you and all of us so that uh i think that's about about gonna wrap us up here for our interview time and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around to watch the stream. We'll be, of course, continuing um, in just a couple minutes here for the next match. We'll be getting Chillier and myself uh, in the commentary box for that match. We'll be saying a so long to the departing Digital Hypno. And, yeah, thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, for sure. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get to see you again tomorrow after uh, after maybe another win. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will see about that we one. We will see. It's going to be yeah. tough. It'll be yeah. tough. Yeah, you definitely can't see the look on my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think we're going to get chillier back in, and we'll be seeing you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the stream, and uh, right. congratulations yep. again on your guys' win tonight. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys.